Hi students, my name is Kristen and I am an outdoor educator for California State Parks. And today we are gonna learn about an incredible insect called the Western Monarch Butterfly. And today we are gonna learn about this butterfly from a magical monarch site that I am standing at called Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove, which is located in Pismo Beach along the central coast of California. Now students, I'm gonna pull an image of the map to give you guys a better idea of where we are located. Now, as you take a look at this map, you may notice that we have a California State Park logo with some images of monarchs. That is the location of the site that I am standing at today and what we are gonna learn about. Now, students, as I listen carefully in the background, I can hear the ocean. We are just about a few minutes walk from the Pacific Ocean. Now, students, would you like to get a closer view of where I am standing? Well, let's take a 360 view of this monarch butterfly grove. Well, students, I invite you on an adventure with me to learn about the magnificent migration of monarchs, their life cycle, what makes a monarch an insect, and so much more. So let's begin by learning about the Western monarch's life cycle. The monarch butterfly life cycle begins when a female monarch lays her egg. Female monarch butterflies may have up to 500 eggs she can lay. Female monarchs only lay eggs on a specific type of plant called milkweed. When the female monarch finds a milkweed plant, she will lay just one egg on the underside of a leaf. Students, why do you think the female monarch places the egg on the underside of the leaf? If you were thinking to hide and protect the egg from predators, you are correct. By placing the egg underneath the leaf, it is hidden from predators and provides the egg a higher chance of survival. About two to three days later, the egg will open and the larva will appear from the egg. The first thing the larva will do is begin to eat the eggshell. The larva will eat the eggshell to remove any evidence it was there from predators so it can continue eating the milkweed plant. The caterpillar continues to eat and eat and eat during this stage of the life cycle. The caterpillar will munch on an entire milkweed plant for about two weeks. During this time frame, the caterpillar will grow and grow and just as humans grow out of their clothes as they grow, caterpillars will grow out of their skin, which is called their exoskeleton. This process of removing their exoskeleton or skin is called molting. Caterpillars will molt a total of five times during the life cycle process. Each time the caterpillar molts, the caterpillar will eat its skin in order to remove the evidence of it being on the milkweed plant and preventing predators from knowing it is there on the plant. During this stage of the life cycle, the caterpillar grows over 2,000 times its size, which is the equivalent of a baby growing into the size of a school bus. After the caterpillar is done eating, it will find a sturdy branch to hang from. Students, as you take a look at this photo of the caterpillar hanging from a branch, what letter of the alphabet does it remind you of? If you are thinking the letter J, you are correct. As the caterpillar hangs from this branch, it will make its final molt into a chrysalis. The chrysalis will hang on the branch for about two weeks, and as it hangs on the branch, the caterpillar is taking part in a process called metamorphosis, where it will change into a butterfly. As metamorphosis occurs, the outside of the chrysalis will change colors, while on the inside, the caterpillar is changing into a butterfly. The chrysalis will begin as a green color and then transition into a brown color, and then finally becoming clear. Once the chrysalis becomes clear in color, the chrysalis will then tear open and the butterfly will emerge. However, the wings of the monarch butterfly will be wet and will need to be dried off before they can fly. The monarch will find a spot in the sun to dry off its wings for a few hours, and after the wings are dried, the monarch is ready to fly. And that, students, is a closer look at the life cycle of a monarch butterfly. Now that we have explored the life cycle of the Western monarch butterfly, what makes this butterfly an insect? Well, to understand what makes the Western monarch butterfly an insect, we need to learn about its anatomy. The monarch butterfly has three body parts, which are their head, thorax, and abdomen. 
In addition to their three body parts, the monarch butterfly also has compound eyes, a pair of antenna, a pair of three legs, and an exoskeleton, which makes them an insect. In just a moment, students, we are going to take part in a song together on the Western Monarch Butterfly Anatomy. But before we do this, we need to talk about the senses of the butterfly. Now, humans have five senses, and monarch butterflies also have senses to help them sense the world around them. So let's get started on learning these senses. The senses of the monarch butterfly include sense one, hearing, sense two, smell, sense three, sight, and sense four, taste. Let's break these senses even further down into two groups. Let's start with sense one, hearing. How do monarchs hear? Well, they hear through their wings, which help them sense vibrations. Sense number two is smell, and how do monarchs smell? Well, they smell with a pair of antenna, which helps them detect the smell of flowers for nectar which is what monarchs eat. Sense three is sight. Monarchs see through a series of lenses called compound eyes. These lenses help monarchs detect the color patterns of flowers to help find nectar for food. Lastly, sense number four is taste, and monarchs use their feet to taste so they can detect nectar. Now that we know the senses of the Western monarch butterfly, students, are you ready to sing our song together? Now before we sing our song, we have one more step, and that is I need to dress like a Western Monarch butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my first piece here, my pair of antenna. All right, hopefully it'll stay. I'm going to put on my compound eyes. All right, starting to look like a Western Monarch. And the last thing I need to do is I need to put on my wings. So students, as I put on my wings, I'm also gonna put on the lyrics to our song, so that way you can sing along with us. All right, what do you say? Do I look like a Western Monarch? All right, let's get started with our song. Great job, students. Well, let's continue on in our program because we have some more magnificent monarch facts to cover. Before we begin our next topic, students, I'd like for you to think about what the word migration means. So we're gonna take a few seconds for you to think about it. Now, as you were thinking about the word migration, did you think about moving, traveling? Well, those are all correct. The Western monarch who comes to this site migrates. They migrate from cooler climates and in late summer, early fall, when the temperatures start to get cooler and the days start to get shorter, this triggers the western monarchs to migrate. So students, let's dive a little bit deeper and learn about this migration. In late summer, early fall, monarchs begin to sense the changes around them. The days begin to get darker earlier and the temperatures start to get colder. This will trigger to monarchs that it's time to move and fly to a warmer location during the winter. Monarchs that migrate to this overwintering site have traveled from distances including the Pacific Northwest and also from interior states like Nevada, Arizona, and Utah. The monarchs will stay here at this overwintering site from November to February. Students, you may be wondering why monarchs migrate to this location. Well, this site here has the perfect conditions for monarchs during the winter. The eucalyptus and cypress trees found at this grove provide a canopy of trees and also provide shelter for monarchs during storms. Also, these tall trees provide branches for monarchs to cluster on. Additionally, this location is what we call a microclimate, which provides the perfect temperature, humidity, sunlight, and wind for monarchs. While the western monarch stays here during the winter months, what can you see western monarchs doing here in our grove? Well, monarchs get close to one another in tree branches. They can also be seen flying around the grove. In order for a monarch to fly, it has to be warmer than 55 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also see monarchs nectar among plants and flowers in the grove for food. 
Well, this concludes our adventure today in learning about the magnificent Western monarch butterfly. Today, we learned about their incredible migration, their life cycle, what makes them an insect, and so much more. Students, I'd like to say thank you for joining me here at the Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. And until next time, this is Kristen. And if you are excited to learn more, please check out our Padlet with the link here on this page. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos about the Western Monarch Butterfly. And also follow us on social media.